Good afternoon, everyone. I uh, just want to start to let everybody know this panel is going to be in English and Spanish. So if you're not bilingual, you need a headset because Xiomara will be speaking in Spanish and they will offer simultaneous translation for Xiomara. And you don't want to miss Xiomara's words. <laughs> um, so thank you all for being here this afternoon. Uh, we're very excited and we're very grateful for the opportunity that we have to present to you the Gender Equity Index. I want to thank uh, our panelists for joining, uh, for the efforts they've put forth to be able to participate today, uh, and, and all of you. We, um, we feel very fortunate right now that gender equity has begun to be a topic common in these spheres. Uh, in specialty coffee and more broadly in the coffee sector, gender <clears throat> equity is now known to be an issue of critical importance with regards to sustainability and everything that we do in the global coffee sector. So, and I'm curious, we're going to start with our panelists with a little bit of conversation about where we are, really the state of the industry with regards to gender equity before we move into talking a bit about the index itself. And so, I'm curious, um, you know, we have been talking about gender equity, but I'm, I wonder from your points of view, the trader view, the producer view, and the roaster view, how well do you think that gender equity is understood right now in, in the sector? Um, and so, Xiomara, would you please? Claro que sí. Eh, bueno, muy buenas tardes. Eh, bueno, yo creo que a nivel de productores y de fincas es un tema que ya se ha venido eh, trabajando eh, poco a poco a través de diversas organizaciones y diversas entidades. Eh, no es fácil debido a todas estas construcciones sociales y culturales que hemos tenido tan arraigadas y continúan todavía marcadas. Eh, pero poco a poco eh, hemos podido eh, ir avanzando y todos nuestros hombres han venido, digamos que, eh, comprendiendo mucho más esa participación de la mujer, eh, han reconocido ese papel tan estratégico que están jugando dentro de la caficultura. Eh, también es importante ver cómo ellos han reconocido que ese trabajo se puede hacer de manera colectiva, una construcción muy importante a nivel social, productivo, económico familiar y comunitario. Eh, Colombia actualmente tiene una gran cantidad de mujeres eh, caficultoras y poco a poco hemos venido observando cómo ellas han tomado este liderazgo, cómo han asumido este reto tan importante eh, dentro de la caficultura y se ha visto representado en esos escenarios donde han estado vinculadas y básicamente han, sido, han estado jugando un papel estratégico en este momento. Pero yo creo que eso no es suficiente, yo creo que se hace necesario eh, que continuemos con estos procesos de formación y de capacitación eh, a los productores y productoras, pero creo que no solamente eh, a ellos, yo creo que es un, una parte importante donde tenemos que vincular a toda la familia, porque este es, eh, digamos, que el eje central para poder generar transformaciones y cambios significativos. Eh, Creo que esto se va a ver eh, reflejado especialmente en estos comportamientos, en fortalecer esos comportamientos, estas actitudes, fortalecer habilidades y capacidades en función de eso mismo para que logremos verdaderamente tener esa equidad y ese equilibrio que estamos buscando entre hombres y mujeres. Muchas gracias, Xiomara. Um, Pedro, por favor. I'm oh, sorry, Pedro. <laughs> well, from, from the trader's perspective or, or the export and importer per perspective, um, we feel that we have a, a massive opportunity in playing a role in both sides of the supply chain. We can, we can work with roasters and we have a massive uh, responsibility in taking those stories out of the farms and take, them, take that storytelling of those amazing experiences of women producers in, in, the, in coffee farms and communicate them to roasters so that they can finally uh, uh, take them to the millions of final consumers around the world. But also, we can work directly through our technical team and bring direct impact to, in the farms at field. Um, in Carabela, we, our technical team is a quarter of a PECA technical team is, is women. And a third of our quality assurance team that is in constant, um, in direct contact with producers, giving them feedback on their, on their quality coffee uh, is our, our woman as well. 
within our organization in the, at management level, 45% is, is women, so those, those strategic decisions are also made by women. We, we like to, to educate ourselves on the matter, understand the problem within our home, within Caravela, so that we can finally get to other homes at, at field and, and approach those, those gaps. Thank you. Uh, Esteban, from Westrack's point of view. Well, uh, I guess to echo what Pedro and Xiomara said, I agree. It's, uh, we, th there is awareness in the industry. Uh, we know there is an issue and there is a big gap. 51% um, of the population is made of women. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, only about 25% of women are receiving services. So the, the reality is that we're falling behind um, as an industry. And I would say this, this applies to our society. This is, this is no different to politics or other industries. Um, so I think we have a historic debt to women. As we were saying, it's been already too long since we're aware of, of this issue and um, we haven't really addressed that systemically. Um, as a roaster, I think it's, uh, it's, it's difficult. We're, we're in a business where uh, we need to be consistent and, and we need to find um, you know, volume that makes sense. And so it's, it's difficult to tackle, but I think um, it, all, all, all we need is really to look at how we're addressing the, the issues. And um, from, from a consumer perspective, um, unfortunately, gender comes like as a fifth priority. So first is price, roasting profile or roasting level. Um, in many cases, environmental uh, communication on the coffee and sometimes even social issues. But gender comes quite far, quite behind. So we, we have a lot of work to do. Thank you, Esteban. And, and as you're pointing out, it is a sort of an, an uphill an uphill battle um, with a lot of opportunity, a lot of work to do. One of the things that um, has really come to the forefront in the, in the industry, and uh, each year we see more and more women's coffees available. And so I'm curious for you all, how, how do women's coffees fit into the conversation about gender equity? Well, I, I see it as a really good starting point. It's a, it's a really great way to open the door for more women to organize and to have a voice um, also to raise awareness, not only in, in, you know, in, in the producing side of, of the industry, but also to, to raise awareness with consumers. Um, it really helps to create a space where women uh, can get a bit of their needs, individual needs or also needs as women, which um, is, is not often the case. Uh, typically, uh, resources are dedicated to uh, the, the farming side without really taking into consideration the context, how women have to uh, deal with uh, usually taking care of the family, but also looking after the farm or helping in the farm. So um, offering that is, is a really good way to start, um, you know, uh, addressing the gender issue. Probably not only the, the, not the only solution, but it's a really good way to start. Thank you. And Pedro? Well, uh, as, as Esteban said, it's a, it's a it's a great approach to spark the conversation throughout the, the industry and the supply chain from producers towards the, the end consumer. Um, in Caravela, we do have women coffee in all our, we source women coffee from all our operations uh, and, and Latin American countries where we, where we buy coffee. Um, we, we strongly believe that it opened commercial long-term relationship with roasters around the world and has become an an impactful marketing strategy for the industry. Nevertheless, it is important that, and we as an industry need to be cautious on, on not staying there in that strategy. We need to, to advocate for integral strategies that not only bring financial, administrative, literacy, and training to women producers at field, but also uh, we need to educate men um, and we need to start deconstructing those, that, that social organization and that social conception that we have been managing for so long. Uh, so education that brings sensitivity on men on how to relate with them, uh, with, with women at field, it is important. It's not about, as you were saying before, it's not about uh, diminishing the participation of men on the, on the industry, but rather making more equitable so that women have more participation, more voice. 
and Xiomara from the producer bueno, view. Eh, definitivamente el café de mujeres es una gran oportunidad, es un reconocimiento muy importante a esta labor que están haciendo ellas desde sus unidades productivas, eh, pero yo creo que sin lugar a dudas eh, lo más importante y esto se va a ver reflejado es en ese nivel de empoderamiento de cómo van a, mo a mejorar ese liderazgo, eh, esa participación, cómo van a ser esos recursos o esos ingresos que van a seguir adquiriendo y bueno, yo creo que un punto importante también es como un, visibilizar un poco más esa oportunidad a nivel asociativo, a nivel cooperativo para que ellas puedan tener esa representación y digamos que esa participación a nivel institucional que también es fundamental eh, creo que también abre mucho la puerta para que haya un respaldo grande en el tema de líneas de crédito que verdaderamente permitan fortalecer sus procesos y que permitan llevar, digamos que a un mayor nivel, todo ese trabajo que están haciendo eh, desde sus familias, desde sus unidades productivas y obviamente pues en pro de mejorar su calidad de vida y su entorno. Thank you. Uh, recognizing a couple of years ago uh, equal origins, recognizing the issue um, of gender equity gaining greater importance and there needing to be um, more focus, really uh, leveraging the work of women's coffee and kind of uh, supporting still how do we support, how do we support the growing efforts towards women's coffee. Um, but also recognizing that there's a vast majority of women that are hidden inside male-headed households, not necessarily gaining any recognition in farmer organizations. And so what we decided to do was uh, work with, um, put together uh, some research. And this research was uh, led by a group of researchers from Yale University. And we did um, desk research and a number of interviews across both the coffee and cocoa sectors. And this is available online, both in English and in Spanish, and we can give you a link to it. Um, but, but really uh, what we saw was that the state of service delivery across the global coffee and cocoa sectors was very inequitable. Um, most services are not actually reaching women. They're not designed and implemented taking into account the unique needs and aspirations, constraints and concerns of women. And they're also not being measured with um, sex disaggregated data or any kind of connection to uh, key performance indicators. And so um, you all have had a chance to review the, the research. And uh, so I'm, I'm curious a bit, like what stood out to you with regards to, to the research? Anything that surprised you or anything that you felt feel is particularly notable, Esteban? Well, I guess it comes to, uh, it's no surprise to most of you, but um, th there's, a, there's a big gap, obviously. And uh, the first thing that stood out to me was the lack of um, gender policies in, in the industry. And I guess that that's no different for us. Um, it, first, we need to have guidance on it, and uh, otherwise it's hard to address. Um, also, that comes with the lack of policies to, to really address it. Um, and the lack of resources. So first, we need to, we need to really consider um, the issue, write some, like a strategy, then policies on how to get there, and also allocating resources, which I guess in, in many cases, it doesn't have to be new resources to get to women. It could be just from the existing resources on services that we offer or um, content or, or however you support the industry, just make sure that um, they're distributed fairly. Uh, another thing that I guess we can all relate, and especially here in Colombia, is um, often is the context or, or the culture that is, that is kind of set as a pretext for not really addressing gender. So it's, uh, you know, the typical, we've done these uh, like that for generations, and uh, men take a role and women take another role, and, you know, it's, it's 2022. It says it's time to, to start acting on it, and we know there's a lot of science and data behind, uh, you know, genders complement each other. So we really need to, um, we need, really need to act on it. Um, and finally, the lack of coherent action. So it's it's like we we have actions on gender, but it's it's not systemic, it's not organized, and and that's certainly something I can relate to. We 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 try, but we need to organize. Great, thank you, Esteban. And Pedro, how about you? 
Well, two, two things struck me the most from the report. The first one being what you just said, the lack of data that we have on the matter. We were just, just talking about, or Stan was just talking about how much we owe to the, to the woman population in the world. And, and we just, just debated on, on how centuries ago we agreed that the earth was not flat and we still are gathering data to, to advocate that women are equal to men. I think we, we owe a big, a big uh, part of, of, or big part of the business owes, owns a lot to, to women. But um, also that lack of disaggregated data uh, it's a huge barrier to, to strategize and to construct the strategies that are in fact impactful for women, you know, for, for coffee women farmers. Um, besides the lack of data, the huge problem that, that the research uh, shows is the uh, inconsistency on the terminology and, and what gender equity is. Um, it is understood different ways along our organization, but also in between organizations and different levels of the supply chain, um, different regions in Latin America, all over the world. So we need to, to homogenize that concept. We need all to understand gender equity in the same way um, so that we can create strategies that are all in line um, in the industry to, to bring impact to them. Thank you. And Xiomara? Bueno, eh, yo creo que de acuerdo con la, con la investigación, eh, quiero resaltar eh, de manera muy importante que muchas de las organizaciones y de las entidades eh, debemos tener un personal capacitado e idóneo en temas de género. Es un tema que no es fácil de abordar y yo creo que para eso tenemos que tener eh, ese lenguaje inclusivo y sobre todo tocar esas líneas tan importantes. Eh, también coincido eh, con la investigación que en muchas oportunidades, muchos de los profesionales en distintas áreas, eh, simplemente realizamos algunas actividades enfocadas al tema de género, pero no lo tenemos contemplado como una prioridad dentro de los planes de trabajo realmente. Simplemente son actividades que estamos llevando a cabo por cumplir un requerimiento o por cumplir realmente un criterio, pero no se está pensando y se está interiorizando como dentro de las políticas institucionales o misionales que realmente queremos eh, digamos que abordar para nuestros productores y bueno, todos los actores de la cadena. Eh, yo creo que en este aspecto es muy importante rescatar y resaltar también que muchas organizaciones, asociaciones, inclusive también la Federación Nacional de Cafeteros, eh, han venido dando unos pasos importantes. Eh, yo creo que muchos ya estamos mirando eh, estas políticas de género, implementándolas, construyéndolas, y creo que es muy importante valorar eso porque eh, va a servir de guía y de modelo para que otras organizaciones que no las tienen empecemos, digamos, que a marchar en la misma línea. Creo que ese es un aporte muy significativo que nos va a poder permitir, digamos, que minimizar esas brechas que tenemos y que vayamos todos eh, los actores en la misma dirección. Thank you. Thank you so much. So now we're all on the same page a bit about the current state of, of the industry, and you can start to consider what the opportunity is. And so as we move in to talk a little bit about the Gender Equity Index, I want to start off with a short video uh, that can highlight the, the opportunity. 80% of the labor it takes to get coffee beans from the farm to your cup. And despite the industry's significant investment in education and technical support to farmers, much of it doesn't reach or benefit women. Hundreds of thousands of women struggle behind the scenes. Their contributions to coffee go unseen, are frequently performed without compensation, and often in harsh circumstances. Women are coffee's hidden workforce. At Equal Origins, we're looking to change that. Not only do women deserve better access to vocational education, but empowering women will also strengthen the supply chain. We can do this by making meaningful structural changes in the way sustainability projects are developed, delivered, monitored, and evaluated. We have recently released a new diagnostic tool called the Gender Equity Index, or the GEI. The GEI helps organizations evaluate the impact of their sustainability initiatives on women in coffee. It's an innovative tool meant to ensure that women can access the services they need and are recognized equally for the work that they do. The GEI gives actors across the supply chain a tangible way to promote equity and equality. Coffee can't grow without women, 
and it's time they are offered the same opportunities as men to learn, grow, and prosper. You can help us promote gender equity in coffee. Learn how. What we're solving for with the Gender Equity Index is that women are not accessing and benefiting from existing extension advisory services. And so you heard uh, something that Esteban mentioned, that it's not necessarily generating, bringing in new resources, although of course we need many more resources allocated to this issue. But we have the opportunity to really look at how do we best utilize the resources that we're already investing in sustainability programming and extension and advisory services. So with the support of the companies that you saw on that last slide, uh, including Caravella uh, and, and others who may be here, um, we pulled together some investment and we invited these industry participants to sit around a table with us to discuss the issue and to design a tool that would really bring value to the sector where we are today and where we want to go. We also brought together a panel of gender experts from academia, from development, uh, working with certifications and standards and benchmarking initiatives. And together with these two groups, we wove together what was needed and what the opportunity is to come up with the five domains of gender equity for extension and advisory service providers. That's a big phrase. What we mean really is any organization, private sector, public sector, development organization that provides services to farmers and farmer organizations. How can they build internal capacity to be able to deliver services in a way that reach and benefit women equally to men? We're not talking about necessarily putting women above men. It really is just equal opportunity. And from an investment point of view, it makes perfect sense. That's why roasters are really interested in this tool, because if they're making sustainability investments, they want to make sure that those investments are in line with their corporate values towards greater gender equity. So this tool uh, is a, exists on a technology platform with 72 questions along these five domains, organizational capacity, strategy and analysis, reach, benefit, empower, and transform. The three domains on the right-hand side, reach, benefit, empower, come from a well-regarded development and agriculture um, framework called the Reach, Benefit, Empower framework, which, which was developed by the International uh, Food and Research Policy Institute, or IFPRI. So what, one of the things that we see as our role as Equal Origins is to be able to help decipher some of the development sector uh, terminology and studies and research and good practices and bring them, distill them into something that's usable and valuable for the coffee sector so that we can really finally, once and for all, make credible impact towards greater gender equity. We know this, this issue uh, has come, become more and more common, and so now it's exciting that we have this opportunity to really do something about it. So the Gender Equity Index um, returns a report back to, uh, to anyone who takes the index. You see there's a score there. In reality, right now, all of the scores are quite low. This is, this is a new issue, and that's not a bad thing that the scores are low. What's most important are the recommendations that come. The report yields recommendations by domain, and then it also yields recommendations by question. So depending on your answer, you get a specific recommendation of what you might be able to do to take action. And the idea is, again, not that the points and the score is important, but it's, but it's your gender equity development plan. What are you going to do now with the information that now that you know how well you're doing and, and maybe the opportunities that you have, what are you going to do about it? And so essentially the, the roadmap is access the index, take the index, get your report, build out a gender equity development plan, 
design, begin to design programs with this gender lens, understanding who are you trying to impact with your services, making sure that you allocate resources adequately to be able to uh, conduct trainings in a more gender equitable way, uh, uh, allocate resources to programs that help to elevate women within your programs, and then over time, the implementation of your services is automatically going to become more equitable and begin to reach and empower and benefit women. And so the idea then is that uh, you can go back and take the test as many times as you want and then see your score improve. And so that's where you can then communicate. The idea is that this starts to foster a conversation with a shared language. Uh, taking gender equity out of, from, from something that's nebulous or scary or difficult to understand or sensitive. No, this is a business issue. This is a business opportunity. It's a human rights issue. And so here is an opportunity to now communicate your progress. Okay, we recognize we have these gaps. We're not perfect. Okay, but we're taking action. We're serious about this issue. And so over time, you can see your score improve, and then you can communicate with your investors, with your roaster partners, with even uh, consumers or your other um, stakeholders with regards to, to your sustainability programming. And again, this common language can really help to foster greater communication, action, and impact in a way that we just haven't had access to in the past in the industry. So I really uh, appreciate all of you being here and you have some knowledge already of the tool and um, are, I have expressed your interest in, in continuing to engage. So I would love for you to talk a little bit about what you see as the potential of this tool based on um, your, your particular role in the sector. Well, the, the first thing is, is it's a bit shocking when you see the results. Um, it, it kind of forces you to look at areas that perhaps your organization hasn't really addressed. And so um, it's, a, it's a very honest assessment in a way which then helps to um, it, it kind of complete the loop, like having a strategy, for, for instance, or um, having policies and goals. Um, you'd be surprised, um, and there's a very good example of four friends that are sitting here. Um, we raised the topic, okay, we need to increase female participation, and just by creating the conversations, you start getting uh, results. And so it, the, the tool really gives you uh, kind of like the pain points. It really shows you where you need to work on or address or address resources. Um, and in my opinion, like, like I think you, you all have, have mentioned, it's a very common language. It's, it's something that we can then all understand, even though it's so simple, participating equally by gender. But, but the reality is that it's, it's not always easy. It's, um, we, we think that we're doing well because we offer services, but uh, the, the truth is the services aren't reaching everyone. So um, I see this as a really good opportunity for collaboration. It has to be uh, like an industry effort. Uh, this this uh, pre-competitive notion that we have that we can all work together. I think gender is one that is, I think, in my opinion, simple to address together. Um, and and we, we really need to uh, try to give value back to, to everyone. And, and it's, we have neglected a lot of the, the population. Uh, and so I feel really sorry for, for all, the, all the people that have suffered these, this inequality. I mean, all the women. And, 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 and this is from you know, uh, consumers to farmers and workers. So it's a really good tool. Thank you. And Pedro? Well, well, the tool takes the, the conversation a step further. Usually, uh, well, a sustainability coordinator or being part of sustainability, gender equity is always a couple of questions out of a bunch of certifications. And, and, and it is included in the gender equity as questions uh, in certifications with this, this is a tool that approach specifically gender equity that allows those companies that, that are willing or actors that are willing to take action on the matter to, to have um, executive commitments that actually can cascade down throughout the organization and be embedded on, on the farmer's role. 
Um, I think that's the, that's the first point. That it creates an opportunity for us to engage directly on gender equity and kind of make it independent from sustainability and rather approach it as a, as a serious issue apart uh, from environment and, and as Esteban was saying before. But uh, it, also, it also allows us to, to compare ourselves. When, when we are able to report our status and, and we are able to create a community on the matter, we can compare our efforts and, and it is all about collaboration. When we know the status of our organization compared to others, other organizations, we can collaborate, create alliances and obviously generate strategies that take us to the common objective. Um, so we as Caravela, we know we cannot do this alone. It's not a West Rock issue alone or at, uh, alone in, in cooperatives, but we need all to, to work together to the issue. And I think this is that common ground, this dashboard that allows us to create that community. Thank you so much. Xiomara? Bueno, yo creo que a nivel de las organizaciones nos va a permitir a nosotros tener una radiografía mucho más clara eh, de cómo estamos actualmente en este momento en el tema de género. Creo que nos va a permitir a nosotros conocer esas debilidades, esas fortalezas y de una manera encaminar eh, con muchas estrategias, digamos que nuestros planes de acción que verdaderamente tengan un enfoque dirigido a este tema de género. Eh, creo que otro punto importante que eh, es necesario tocar es que, que nos va a permitir tener un insumo eh, para poder eh, reafirmar como esa voluntad política que desde las organizaciones realmente la equidad de género sea eh, ocupe un lugar importante, igual como otros componentes que tenemos en cuenta, como la parte ambiental, la parte productiva, que haga parte de toda esa estructura que se ha articulado y no lo veamos como una isla aparte. Acá está la equidad de género y acá está el resto de componentes, no, que sea todo articulado. Y bueno, el tema también creo que, que debemos tocar es la parte del recurso. Yo creo que para, para este tema se necesita el dinero, se necesita el recurso para llevar a cabo la ejecución de estos planes de acción, pero que estos planes de acción no estén enfocados únicamente en la capacitación, sino que realmente toquemos puntos importantes y articulemos esa parte productiva, social, eh, esa dinámica familiar también. Entonces, creo que el tema del recurso es necesario, que también como tienen recursos otros puntos importantes dentro de su empresa, que la equidad de género también llegue a ocupar ese lugar donde sepamos eh, que también se requiere ese dinero para generar estas actividades y unas acciones contundentes que generen un impacto positivo en todas nuestras familias productoras y todo nuestro entorno. Thank you so much, Xiomara. I, I think we have a few minutes for a question or two. Um, would someone in the audience like to ask a question? Sure. Um, <laughs> so, I'm sorry, I got just carried on. So, I want to add something about what Xiomara said. And it's, okay, it's great. This tool I see like a great organizational tool, but I see few use in the field. I mean, I'm a, I'm a producer. I work with farmers. I am a farmer myself. And when you see about the culture in the farm, you will see people that will say women are not good for picking coffee because it's, I don't know, bad luck or whatever. Yeah, and you will see that in the field. So, besides this tool, how can the farmers access this kind of education? And not, not only the farmers, but everybody in the value chain. Because you see, there are not that many women, roster women. There are not many roster traders. There are a lot of women farmers and they have been used for selling more coffee. So how to go into the heart, into the farm, teach us farmers, teach our workers, and teach our buyers to make a better job in getting that to that point with gender equality is not about just saying we're all equal, but we have the same opportunities and we are as important in the whole chain. So after using this tool, what can we do in the farm? I, I could say something. Yeah. Well, I think we agree on your assessment. Um, unfortunately, we. Can you hear me? Right. 
we, we need to take progress uh, as it comes. Um, the tool is, is, is really good at addressing where you have gaps. And uh, one, one key thing to address is education. I mean, ideally, we, we, we would receive all of these education from, you know, from early school. Uh, the, the reality is we, we don't have that. And so we, we need to start with people that understand how to address gender equity. We need to train the, the teams that are offering technical assistance, and we need to give them the tools. And I guess the, the index um, does it really well. It's showing you where you have the, the kind of pain points, um, and, and every question comes with a recommendation. So it's really, I mean, you probably have to go into the tool to, um, to understand more, so I invite everyone to, to have a look. Um, but it, it does address specific questions with you know, recommendations. Yeah, I, I would add in, in the same in the same line that that we need to we need to understand from from our perspective and our role what's the problem before getting to the farmers and we as as Stellan said it's important that our PECA team our technical team as traders have the understanding and believe and are aware of the consequences and the challenges we are facing uh, in Carabel at least more than half of our team directly at field comes from producer communities and and they need to understand we need to to engage in that in training and educate them to understand the gaps if they do not understand it if they do not believe in them then it would be very hard for them almost impossible to transmit those trainings and teachings to farmers um, so i think that we have to approach it from organization to be able to create strategies, training programs but for women, but also education for men so that we can all work together. If men do not understand the problem there in field, then we are mostly not doing much. They, we need men to understand it so that they can, they, they need to understand that it's not taking power out of them, but it's rather balancing the discussion uh, and the participation of women in the industry. Bueno, eh, complementándote a lo tuyo, eh, quería también hacer un énfasis especial que realmente sí, como dicen mis compañeros, creo que todos tenemos que ver con este tema de capacitación y formación. Creo que tenemos que empezar a manejar eh, un lenguaje mucho más inclusivo en este aspecto, pero creo que un punto muy importante es buscar la manera en que esta parte de los equipos técnicos, de todo este equipo multidisciplinario de nuestras organizaciones, realmente interiorice estos temas y sepa llegarle al productor, porque no es fácil tú abordar una, un tema tan sensible que toca tantas fibras a nivel familiar, que tú lo sepas llegar y explicarle a ese productor cómo tú tienes que ver esa equidad de género realmente para poder lograr ese equilibrio entre hombres y mujeres. Entonces, yo creo que un aspecto que también debemos trabajar es no es solo el del productor y su familia, que es totalmente integral, sino que los equipos de trabajo, los técnicos que tienen un contacto directo con el productor, aparte de hablar de productividad, de lo ambiental, ¿cierto? Que también tengan un enfoque en género y puedan articular todo esto para que lo integremos y no lo trabajemos como islas y realmente sepamos llegar a este punto tan importante que tenemos Let's get to back on the stairs. Thank you so much, all three of you, for your, for your answers. We're, we're just at time, and, and I think one thing I want to underscore is that, as you've rightly pointed out, this is a very complex topic. And what's happened in the past is it's so complex that people like put it to one side. And as Esteban said, it ends up being the fifth of already 12 prior, or the, like the the last and beyond the last of the priorities of a company. So really what we're trying to do with this tool is say, you have a very specific sphere of responsibility. You're delivering services. Let's start with making sure those services are accessible and equitable to every, everyone. And then as we get started on this path together in collaboration, building alliances, then we can start to see where are the other places where we want to grow a way to expand our sphere of responsibility into a greater sphere of influence. Where do we as the coffee sector, where can we actually influence beyond what we're actually responsible for, influence to really make a significant impact for coffee farming women and their families and everyone up and down the supply chain. 
So I want to close with an invitation to all of you. This is not about these four companies and organizations, not only about equal origins, but all of us in this room. We all have an opportunity to contribute. And so what we're looking to do is really foster a, a credible, sustainable, scalable collaboration so that we can really stand up and say that we have driven impact for women, families, and the industry as a whole towards sustainable development goal number five. And that we can celebrate, we have so much to offer as the specialty coffee and the global coffee sector. We have so much to offer, and I know that we all have the best intentions to make positive impact for everyone, kind of responding to the lack of action over so many years. All we have to do is look at how do we reallocate resources that we're already spending to make sure that everyone can benefit from, from the work. So I invite you, if you have a second and you want to take a snapshot of this um, QR code, we have upcoming webinars. Um, we really want to continue this conversation. We want to continue the education. We have a webinar already planned on July 13th in bilingual with Siomara and three other producer organization representatives equally as inspiring and as uh, full of wisdom as Siomara. We will be inviting industry partners also to share their journey because this is not you're going to take a step and automatically be successful. We're going to take steps and we're going to fall backwards. And so we want to be able to share our learning and our experience, our excitement, and the work that we do together so that we can really make a positive impact. So hope to have you uh, join us and, and follow us and participate in upcoming webinars. And really want to thank you all for being here because it's busy out there. There's lots of opportunities to be talking with people. So thanks so much for spending your time here with us and we'll be available on the side to uh, answer more questions. And really, really thank you to the, the three of you for being here. I'm really inspired inspired by your commitment and your work and your drive, uh, and so we're con uh, grateful. Thank you all so much. Thank you.